Good morning, and welcome to this seventh Sunday after Pentecost, July 19, 2020, media cast of the Heinz Memorial Christian Methodist Episcopal Church, located at 408 North Madison Street, Albany, Georgia, 31701, where the pastor is the Reverend Dr. Or L. Spragan, Jr., the presiding elder is the Reverend Bobby K. Galladay, Sr., and the presiding prelate is Bishop Thomas L. Brown, Sr. We pray in the name of Jesus that you will be blessed by this service and that the Spirit of the Lord will prevail in your life. pray. O Lord, as we come before you this day at your gracious invitation, we recognize that you are the God who created us. As your word says, you have made us and not we ourselves. We are your people and the sheep of your pasture. You have tended to us throughout all of our lives even from our earliest existence when we did not even know ourselves. You have cared for us with motherly love and fatherly affection, and we thank you. By your grace, you gave us food to eat and a place to lay our heads. It may not have been what we wanted, but we would not be ungrateful for your kindness to us. We will content ourselves with your provisions and will use the gifts and abilities you have given to us to better ourselves by your will, trusting in you to open doors and to go before us. We want to thank you, Lord, for jobs to go to and for friendships and family. We recognize that some have no jobs and are in need of employment, while others are in bad situations, though they have to work and they have work to do. Grant us faith to put all our situations in your hand, to trust you to fix them or to fix us, or both. Have mercy on us and teach us to find our most satisfying employment in the service of your kingdom, telling others about your goodness and mercy, and offering them Christ through our conversations with them and our lives before them. May we never be unemployed in your work, knowing that our labor in you is not in vain. Then, God, we want to lift before you those persons who are on the sick and shut-in list. Some of them are written, but others are on our minds and in our hearts. 
You know their hurts, their aches, their pains. You know their anguish and their anxieties. You know the desires and the fears of their hearts and spirits. You also know the test results before the samples are collected, before the appointments are made and before the consults are called. We ask you, the great physician, to go before each one of these, to be with them in their various and unique situations, and to grant them the wisdom to call upon your holy name. We also recognize and admit that you are the greatest medicine that we need in our lives and in our world. We repent of our many sins, God, and ask that in your mercy you will grant us your healing and your peace. Hold not our sins against us as we seek your face, we pray. Touch our leaders from the church house to the White House. Let them know that you are God of everything and that they will one day have to answer to you. Help them to lead according to your will and grant all us your people faith to act in righteousness as we wait on your deliverance. Have mercy upon us, O God, as you have your way. Family, we ask that you remember with compassion those who have lost loved ones. We ask now that you bless the families of Sister Ira Paul, Mr. Buster Lee, and Congressman John Lewis. Comfort them in their grief and sorrow, and use us, your children, as instruments of your blessing to them and to this world. And as we remember them, help us to draw closer to you. Grant us now to worship you in spirit and in truth. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. The Old Testament scripture reading comes from the book of Genesis, mm -hmm. chapter 28, verses 10 through 19a. Today's readings come from the King James Version. Genesis chapter 28, verses 10 through 19a. And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran, and he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. And he took up the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed and behold a ladder set up on the earth and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold the angels of God ascending and descending on it. And behold the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham thy father and the God of Isaac. The land whereon thou liest to thee will I give it, and to thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. And in thee and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest, and will bring thee again into this land. For I will not leave thee, until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. And Jacob awaked out of his sleep, and he said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I knew it not. And he was afraid, and said, How dreadful is this place! This is none other but the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. And Jacob rose up early in the morning, and took the stone that he had put for his pillow, and set it up for a pillar, and poured oil upon the top of it. And he called the name of that place Bethel. The New Testament scripture reading comes from the book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 12 through 25. Romans, chapter 8, verses 12 through 25. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, 
but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope, because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption, to wit, the redemption of our body. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth, yet, why doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. The Lord bless the reading and hearing of his holy word.
Today's message finds its basis in the Old Testament book of Genesis, chapter 28, and verse 15. And behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest, and will bring thee again into this land. For I will not leave thee, until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. We'd like to share from this title, Living in the Hope of God living in the hope of God. Lord, we pray now that you would bless this preaching of your word. We know that it is blessed because it has come from you. We ask, O oh God, that you will help us to hear you as you speak to us. Make it plain, O oh God, that we may truly understand and with the understanding follow you gladly. In Jesus we pray. Amen. Living in the hope of God. It seems that in some ways, Jacob and his mother, Rebecca, had thought that Jacob would find security and contentment of life in the riches of this world. It was for this reason that Jacob had stolen his brother Esau's inheritance. And now Esau was just waiting for the right time to get even by killing his brother Jacob. All this had come to pass because of the deceitfulness of their mother, Rebekah. Now this same deceitful woman was using the same lying tongue to try to keep her favorite son alive. Little did she know that God would use her evil ways to bless Jacob. And little did Jacob know that he would run into the Lord while he was running away from his brother. But it would not be long before he had an encounter with God at a place he later named Bethel. It was there in the middle of the night on his way to try to make for himself a new family in a place that he thought he would find safety that he learned three things about God. The first thing he learned is that God is with you in your distress. Jacob was running from death. He was running from the certainty of death that he would receive at the hand of his brother Esau. He was also running from loneliness because he was running. He no longer had a place. He was running from what had been home to a place where he hoped to find a home. And he was betwixt in between and therefore lonely. He didn't really have a family back home because he had destroyed that family. And he didn't know what kind of family he was going to make when he got to his relative's place. He was running from death and Jacob was running from loneliness, but he found that God is with you in your distress. The second thing he learned is that God gives you promises in your distress. God said to him in that verse we just read that he was going to be with him, that he was going to give him a future, that he wouldn't leave him. God gives you promises in your distress. God promises first to give you a good future. And then secondly, God promises to keep you in the present. He said to Jacob, I'm with you where you are and I'll be with you where you're going. I'm God. And so knowing these two things, Jacob learned the third thing, the presence of God through his word for right now and the promises of God for the future are reason enough to worship God. And that's what he did. He worshiped the Lord in his heart. 
He said, I didn't know that God was here, but now I know that God is here. He worshiped the Lord in his heart. And the thing he did next was to build an altar and worship the Lord in practice. It's not just enough to worship the Lord in your heart, to say you know the God, the, the God of all creation, that you know the God who made you, the God who's in control. It's not just enough to say that you know him. You got to act like you know him. And so he worshiped the Lord from his heart. And then he worshiped the Lord in practice as he built the altar. And then the third thing he did was he renamed the place in recognition of his new relationship with the living God. Some things about you ought to change when you know, when you come into a real and a trusting relationship with the living God. Jacob still needed to learn more about this God of whom he had apparently heard, but to whom he had not committed. But he knew enough to know that this God is the real deal. He had begun his journey in fear, but he could now go on in faith. He could go on in the hope of God, living in the hope of God. Now, looking back over Jacob's life, he was suffering for his own actions. But in Romans chapter 8, Paul talks about another suffering. Not a just suffering because of what we have done, but suffering for the cause of Christ. Paul says that if we suffer for Christ and with Christ, we shall also reign or rule with him in the life to come. It has been predetermined that those who will join themselves to Christ will suffer because of his name and the hope that lies within them. This has been determined by Satan and is allowed by God in much the same way that Job was tempted that he might curse God and die. But he didn't do it. He stuck with God and lived. Remember, he had that hope. Now, some might ask why those who enter a trust relationship with God must suffer at all. Why will not God simply deliver them or keep them from all evil once and for all in this life? Might I say that we are the ones who broke the covenant with God in the beginning through Adam and Eve and continue to do so now through our own sins, just as the scripture says? God always has shown God's faithfulness. We are the ones who have doubted God's faithfulness and truth. We are the ones who need to be taught and to learn consistent faith in God through the trials of life. If we will learn not to quit on God, but to live in the power and expectation of the Spirit, if we learn to live in the hope of God, we will see that God has never quit on us. Then, though our sins are stacked against us, we shall see the fulfillment of the hope that is in Christ Jesus. And we shall know and shall live the truth contained in verses 23 through 25 of Romans chapter 8. The salvation of the Lord is revealed temporarily in this world. It's revealed, but it is attained, but it is fully realized only in the life of the world that is to come. For the things of this world are temporal, but they are for this world only. But the things that are of God are eternal. Yeah, some people get so wrapped up in what is the things of this world. They get so wrapped up in what they don't have or, or what they do have in this life. That that's all that they think of and it's all they think that matters. That's as far as they can see. Maybe that's all they want. But their eyes are blinded by Satan, the God of this world, who is no equal to our Heavenly Father, and whose domain of power is for this world only because it has been given to him. But what has been given will be taken away at the last. And those who are Satan's children, Scripture says in Luke 19, verses 11 through 27, even that which they think they have, 
shall be taken away from them because they refuse the lordship of the most high God and his eternal kingdom, seeking instead that which gives temporary satisfaction and perishes away. Yeah, Jacob was running, believing that he no longer had a home, nowhere to go, no one to turn to. But God came to him in the middle of the night and said, I am the God of your ancestors and I want to be your God too. Jacob was a trickster, a conniver, a liar, a cheat before this encounter. But afterward, he learned to practice honesty. He went looking for an earthly family, but he gained even more, a heavenly one. He went looking for safety and found that trust in God is the best security. He went running from human justice and ran straight into the arms of the just and merciful God. God knew who Jacob was. He knew what he was. And God loved him just the same. In spite of himself. Just as God knows who you are. And what you are. And loves you just the same as he loved Jacob in spite of yourself. But like a Jacob, God will show you who he is. But it's up to you to recognize that God is everywhere. That God is God. And to worship him. God has an inheritance for you that no man can take away from you. God has something for you that no one else can take and no one else has. It's for you. Do you want it? Will you let the Spirit of God lead you into the pervasive and eternal presence and peace of God? Will you trust the Lord who extended himself to you through his son, Jesus, just as he extended himself to Jacob in the vision of the latter? Jacob saw the latter as a symbol of God's presence with human beings in the earth. Jesus was the very presence of God in the earth. The Holy Spirit is God's continuing presence with us in the earth until the consummation of time when earth and sea shall be no more and the kingdom of God shall be fulfilled. In your deepest distress, you may not have a dream like Jacob. You may not see a ladder going up to heaven and angels ascending and descending on it. You may not receive a visible sign of any kind. But if you seek the Lord, he will speak to your spirit by the Holy Spirit and will let you know that you are his child, adopted by the Spirit, and that he is with you in all things. Don't let your troubles turn you away from God. Run to him. Work to put to death the sin that is in you by the power of the Almighty God. And he will deliver you from the bondage of sin and death into the wonderful freedom known only by the children of God. The songwriter says, if we are willing, he will teach us his voice only to obey no matter where. He knows. Yes, he knows just how much you and I can bear. If we're willing to see it. We will understand that sin works against us even from within our own bodies. The spirit wars against the flesh. We need God's help through the spirit if we would gain victory over the flesh. But the good news is that the Lord God helps us in our infirmities. God has indeed already shown us a token of his goodwill towards us in many acts of mercy and especially through the gracious offering of his son for our sins. Yet we are reminded in Psalm 86 verse 14 that the proud will not stop rising against us and that the battle continues tomorrow even after the victories of today until the Lord of all puts all things and powers in their proper place, in their proper order. And that according to his own good will and according to his timing, not ours. 
because God has already shown himself to be merciful. We have hope and not just a hope, but the scripture says we have a good hope for repentance of our sins. Even in these troubling and tempting times, God is reaching down to you. God is reaching out to you, inviting you by the spirit to enter a new relationship with him, saying to go on and live. Live your life in the hope of God. Would you give your life and live your life in the hope of God today? It matters not who you are or what you have done, what your past is. God is offering to you a fresh opportunity, an opportunity to leave the past in the past and become a new person in him by his power. He will make you over. The God of all creation who makes all things new will make you new. If you just give him the opportunity and let him work on you. Jacob gave him the opportunity as he spoke to him. As Jacob heard the voice of God and saw the vision that night, Jacob said, God, I want the opportunity that you're offering to me. And he woke up and worshiped. Paul says anyone who is in Christ wakes up and worships in spite of this life. This life comes against you, but Christ is for you and will deliver you and help you in every trial. He offers salvation to you this day. I offer you that salvation in his name. Will you receive it? I pray that you will. In the name of Jesus, amen. today for this July 19, 2020 media cast of the Heinz Memorial Christian Methodist Episcopal Church. We pray it has been a blessing to you and that the Lord will use it to draw you close to him and to help you through the week. If you received the Lord Jesus as your personal Savior today, we certainly congratulate you on your wise decision and pray you will continue to receive these services as a means to your discipleship and spiritual growth. Please write to us or email us at heinzmemorial at gmail.com to let us know how the Lord is blessing you. That's heinzmemorial at gmail.com. We say a great thank you for your continued prayers and financial support of the ministry and activities of this congregation as you are moved to do so. We pray the Lord's blessings upon you in remembrance of your heartfelt kindness. Contributions may be mailed in, picked up, or given electronically by downloading the Givelify app and then searching for the Heinz Memorial CME Church in Albany, Georgia. Follow the steps provided by the app to make your contribution. Here are some additional announcements and observations. Daily scripture readings are provided through the online ministry of Vanderbilt University Library. I pray you continue to do well and practice safe hygiene measures and social distancing 
as well as practice other recommendations from the CDC and WHO as we continue to experience COVID-19. That's the Centers for Disease Control and the World Health Organization. We are praying for you. Heinz Memorial Buildings remain closed until further notice. Thank you to our Board of Christian Education and our Sunday School teachers for facilitating our Sunday classes and other forms of Christian education by electronic means. God bless you and our students. Please minister to our sick and shut-in with your prayers and other acts of support and love. These include Sister Ella Miller, Sister Mary Williams, Sister Geneva Hill, Reverend James Hazel, Sister Juanita Miller, Sister Janet Edwards, Brother Edgar Parker, Brother D.C. Hazel, Brother Michael Sanderson, Sister Nellie Thorne, Sister Rosa McGee, Sister Julia Williams Harris, Brother Charles Harris, Sister Fraulein Bradley, Sister Ruby Pompey, Sister Shakitia Morgan and family, Brother Marquavius Mason, and Brother Prince Brooks. We join the immediate family and close friends of our faithful member, Sister Ira Paul, in mourning her passing this past Tuesday, July 14, 2020. Sister Ira was a long-standing member of Hines who served dutifully as an usher, made friends easily, was generous with her love and possessions, and often attended church services even when her health made her presence difficult. At her request, there are no services planned, but we continue in prayer for her family, including sisters Marva Swint and Arthera Sanders, Arthura Sanders, excuse me, and brother Wayne Paul. As you look over the daily activities for this week, you will see that uh, we don't have any listed, but please keep in mind the daily scripture readings. And we do wish on Wednesday, July 22nd, a happy birthday to Kelly Bazin and Alexis Bazin. Again, thank you for joining us today. It is our prayer that you will enjoy fellowship with the Lord this week and that you will join us again next Sunday. Until then, may God keep you is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.